All right, let's take a quick look at Kabul Airport. Don't forget, they're eight and a half hours ahead of us there, so uh, well into the afternoon uh, today. Um, we are keeping a close eye on the situation there. The U.S. intercepting five rockets fired at the airport overnight while you were sleeping. Uh, it happening early in the morning there. There is a, a defense system called CRIM, which is basically a counter defense system. Um, it does work. It was effective. Uh, nobody was injured. Nobody on the Taliban side and nobody on the U.S. side. Still feels unusual to say that. The Taliban, yeah. according to the president, now our allies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And joining us now to break it all down, retired Lieutenant Colonel Darren Gab, who re served four e tours in Afghanistan and is currently the executive director of RestoreLiberty.org. Colonel Gab, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Colonel, you were the principal designer of the U.S. military NEO, or ne non combative evacuation operations and for Afghanistan. What are you hearing about this withdrawal? Because, you know, the government's saying we have 250 Americans. We really don't know the total. How are they going to get everyone? Every American out. Hey, good morning. Yeah, thanks for having me back on. And I think uh, there's a lot, there are many questions. And uh, as part of the team that actually built this plan uh, years ago, we, we know we had a lot, there's a lot of challenges when it comes to building non combatant vacuum operations. And we know that there's going to be a lot of U.S. members left. We know that the allies are going to remain behind. We know that uh, there's going to be many Afghans left behind as well. And you know, President Biden keeps saying that we're going to get all Americans out who want to get out. I'm not really sure even what that means or what his plan is to do so. I know the soldiers, sailor, airmen, and Marines on the ground are doing all they can. And part of the challenge is we're having reports now or we're receiving some information from in theater that there are Americans standing in line at the airport trying to get out with valid U.S. passports. And they see large groups of people going to U.S. airplanes to to uh, fly out of Kabul, and we're not really 100% sure that they're really vetting those individuals correctly. And there's a lot of risk that uh, Americans are assuming in the U.S. and other countries, because we're not even really sure right now who we have on the ground as far as Afghan refugees in these different places where we're moving them to. Yeah, it's concerning, especially with, you know, my concern is is for the Americans that are still there and then our allies that have helped us over the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, you brought up these refugees yesterday. Uh, several who have been flown into uh, Fort, Fort Bliss in the state of Texas were flagged on terror watch lists. Um, what is the vetting process for these thousands of Afghan refugees? You know, I, I'm not 100% sure right now exactly how they're doing all the vetting of individuals. I, I can't imagine with the, the volume of people at the airport having spent a lot of time on Kobo Airport that uh, when that place is flooded with so many folks, we don't really know 100% sure who they are. I'm not a positive of the exact vetting procedures they've got on, in there right now with that many people rushing in. You, you saw the, uh, the um, vast amount of people that were on the runways and I don't think there's really a very good way you can vet that number of people. And there's a lot of folks that people are on the ground looking at moving towards these airplane in larger groups who they're recognizing as folks that have never worked with the U.S. before in the past. And they're not sure why they're getting onto the planes and flying out now while American citizens are standing at the gate for days on end wondering when their turn is coming. Lieutenant Colonel Darren Gobb, thanks so much for uh, joining us again. We'll see you again top of next hour. Uh, we appreciate your expertise. Uh, let's welcome in the powerhouse panel on this Monday morning. We start with former special assistant to President Donald Trump and commentary editor for The Washington Times, as well as a Newsmax contributor, Kelly Sadler, back with us. Political analyst Mark Halperin is here, and former Marine Corps Captain uh, Matt Tito is joining us from the state of Florida. Uh, good morning to all of you, uh, Matt. Nice to have you back on the show. Um, I saw that you were on. I was watching from vacay and I saw that you were on and I was uh oh I said Matt come on you know I, I wanted you off your own show. exactly exactly but it's good to have you on I, I have a few questions for you um the first one uh th this this dignified transfer um that's that's the the term that that's used when when a commander-in-chief receives uh the body of fallen soldiers yesterday that happened at, at Dover Air Force Base not far from the president's house in uh in Delaware um, why, why do they call it that? And I ask you that because we got a report yesterday, um, as we continue to remember and honor these 13 lives that were lost. 20-year-old Riley McCollum, um, he was expecting a, uh, his first baby with uh, his wife back home. Um, his mother was on a radio show on Friday, and she, she did not have kind words to say about President Joe Biden. She called him a dementia-riddled piece of uh, a, a four-letter word that I, I can't say, but she said this on, uh, on public airwaves. Um, 
I know you've been involved in situations like this. Why do they call it a dignified transfer? Well, this is something that's the bare minimum for the commander in chief to do is, is to welcome home those service members that pay the ultimate sacrifice and to at least greet the families and be there uh, and show your condolences for you know, the families of service members that, that laid down their lives to protect us here at home. But Joe Biden would have been better off staying at home eating ice cream in the basement because these parents didn't want to see him. They wanted no part of him. They blamed him for what happened in Afghanistan to their children, rightfully so. And he would have been better off just staying at home. And it was good to see the Secretary of Defense finally come out of hiding and, and show up instead of sending John Kirby out there to talk on his behalf. And where is Kamala Harris? We haven't seen her in a while. So is she distancing herself from this whole entire situation in hopes that, you know, when she runs in 2024, it won't be an issue for her? Yeah. The lack of leadership from the cabinet and the commander in chief is absolutely pitiful. But him showing up yesterday was the bare minimum. And I see the liberal media just praising him for just showing up. I mean, that's what he's supposed to do. I just, you know, I watched this this solemn, uh, sad ceremony take place yesterday afternoon. And the president met with the families. 11 of these 13 families wanted the press to be there. Uh, one father spoke out. He said he wanted the press to be there so the American people would understand what's going on. But I can't imagine that was... You know, that was an easy thing for the families in particular. I, I'm not concerned with how the president felt about it. I'm concerned with these families because if this was handled properly, these 13 people would not be dead. Um, we also saw American flags draped over those coffins yesterday, and it reminded me of uh, the 4th of July. We had that New York Times editorial board writer, uh, Maura Gay, talking about the American flag. Take a listen to what she said two months ago. I was on Long Island this weekend uh, visiting a really dear friend, and I was really disturbed. I saw, you know, dozens and dozens of pickup trucks with, uh, you know, uh, explicatives against Joe Biden uh, on the back of them, yep. uh, Trump yep. flags, and in some cases just dozens of American flags, which, you know, uh, is also just disturbing. Well, Kelly, you know, it's not a light moment, but that didn't age well, that's for sure. Uh, you brought up a poll last hour. 84% of the American people, according to ABC News, are not happy with the way that Joe Biden handled this. And I think in many respects, after Morgay's comment on the 4th of July weekend right there about the American flag, we've come full circle, haven't we? Well, I mean, these 13 Americans that lost their lives represent the best of America, right? And if you read their stories, and a lot of their stories were coming out over the weekend, I mean, they were all very young, you know, ranging. They enlisted when they, as soon as they possibly could in high school. And it was their goal to be a Marine. It was their number one, right. you know, life choice. You had a picture of the of the woman who lost her life holding, you know, holding a, a child um, in Kabul saying, you know, this is the greatest job I've ever had. These are patriots. These are patriots who don't, you know, go into the locker room when the, you know, the anthem is played, uh, that are proud of their country and want to serve. And I just think this is a great testament to America that we still have these young folks who are so patriotic that want to serve and are so proud of their country. Thank God for these yeah. 13 brave patriots, all uh, so young. The oldest, I believe, was 31 years old. Uh, Mark, the president was at FEMA headquarters in Washington. He wasn't in the Southeast yesterday. He was in Washington at FEMA headquarters uh, talking about uh, Hurricane Ida and uh, the preparedness. And he said he's not supposed to take questions, but then he took a question. Take a look at this exchange. Thank you very much, and thank you, Commissioner. I, I really think it all works. I'm not, I'm not supposed to take any questions, but go ahead. Mr. President, on Afghanistan? I'm not going to answer Afghanistan now. Can you give me still an okay. risk Mark, I look at that, and uh, it's just disappointing. You got the biggest international crisis since, I mean, I think this is bigger than Benghazi, so maybe all the way back to 9-11. Uh, and the president, the commander-in-chief, is not taking questions. The White House wants to dispel questions about the president's uh, capacity. They just shouldn't put him in positions like that. He should be an answering questions about, as you said, a very important matter. Uh, you know, they like to space out his his talking to the public about it. But this is not a time for silence. It's a time for leadership. And I think, if again, if the White House wants to dispel questions, they should let him answer questions. Mark, quick follow, just about 15 seconds. Do we get a sacrificial lamb? Um, you've got the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Milley. A lot of people are calling for him to resign or be fired. Does that happen this week? Just not Joe Biden's way. I would be just short of stunned if anyone gets fired or resigns over this. Do you know what Joe Biden's way is, Mark? Because I have no idea what his way is. He doesn't like to fire people. 
Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.